I am German when we win, but I am an immigrant when we lose. These are the powerful words of Mesut Ozil, a man who has won a World Cup for his country and a record five German Player of the Year awards. And this week on Justin's Case, we're looking at why this incredible player divides opinions so strongly in his native Germany. Let's go. Ozil mainly is like an interesting example of wider debates in German society. In general, football players, they are highly profiled in any case. I mean, they're top level, they're highly talented, highly skilled. They earn a lot of money, of course, that make them public figures. Mesut Ozil burst onto the scene with Schalke. And what a talent he was. His eyes see everything, and it made him the master of the assist. Though his dribbling skills were quite apt as well. And then he took an interesting move by skipping Bayern Munich for Real Madrid. And at Real, he shone. He was even being compared to Zinedine Zidane, a complete club legend. He was one of the major talents in German football. And he won various prizes. Of course, he was eventually deemed surplus to requirements and was shipped out to Arsenal. And with Arsenal, he was a player who split opinion. Many loved him, like nay, adored him. But many also felt he didn't run hard enough or show the right body language. Which is weird to me, but okay, that's fine. Not everyone will agree, right? But there's something else strange here. It wasn't just Arsenal fans that felt weird about Ozil. It was also Germans. It's really interesting in the sense that he's third generation Turk. I mean, that means that he's born in, in Germany, in Gelsenkirchen, but also his father has been born in Germany. But still his upbringings have their roots back to Turkey. I mean, that's his family heritage. At the age of 70, he chose to give up his Turkish passport in return for a full German citizenship, which in regards to the FIFA eligibility regulations made him eligible to represent the German national football team. He made a choice to lay his loyalty in a certain way to the German nation, to the German state, by basically publicly declaring, well, not to be not Turkish anymore, uh, but to give up his Turkish citizenship. In 2018, at the World Cup, Germany flamed out of the tournament. I mean, it was pretty embarrassing for the Germans. And the man who took a lot of that blame, Ozil. And he has been widely regarded as the model immigrant, so to say. But that has changed over time, and in particular with the 2018 World Cup, where Germany got knocked out even in group stage. Now before that tournament, Ozil and his fellow teammate of Turkish origin, Elke Gandouan, had posed for photos with the president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The German media kind of like sought someone to scapegoat and to blame it on. And Ozil became, well, basically the target because of his Turkish roots but also because just like a month before the start of the tournament, together with uh, Gundogan, they had a press moment with Recep Erdogan, the Turkish Prime Minister, which was not like everyone felt great about it in Germany, so to say. Now, of course, if you know anything about global politics, you know that Erdogan isn't just like a president. Yeah, he's an autocrat. He's consolidated his personal position as the leader of Turkey by changing the Turkish constitution. And under his rule, a lot of minorities, activists, journalists, and people in the political opposition have suffered. In Germany, this photo was a big deal. Ozil and Gundogan were lambasted. Now, Gundogan apologized, but Ozil didn't. Ozil doubled down and defended his decision. I mean, he always has said in media outlets that he still feels Turkish. I mean, he feels both. And I think that's important to emphasize. He's not either one or the other. No, he's both. His personality is based on both cultures. And listen, as a player, I like Ozil. I'm also a fan of the work he does off the pitch. I think he does a lot of good, speaking out on issues like the Uyghur issue in China, among many others. He donates a lot of money to good causes too, and he doesn't always publicize all of it. But on this issue, I really disagree with Ozil. I don't know his situation with his family in Turkey, but I don't think he should be lending support to someone who abuses human rights like Erdogan does. I think you can see a theme in some of my shows. I don't like when people abuse human rights. But here's the thing. Many people decided to criticize Ozil in an entirely wrong way. They criticized him as not being a good German. There's really a difference between formal citizenship in the sense that that means that you have been granted a passport by a state. So, I mean, you have well, Ozil has German citizenship and has to give up his formal passport of Turkey. But that does not mean that you are morally accepted into the nation of that state. And when Germany lost in Russia, 
a lot of people use this incident as a way of attacking Ozil again. Umarım yine Cumhurbaşkanımız da görüşmesine de itiraz etmezsiniz Ayko Mesut'un. Problem çıkarmazsınız. So why do Germans feel this way about Ozil? The resignation letter that Mesut Özil wrote to resign from the German national team yeah, was kind of like on the edge of racism. He pointed out that for some people, even in the German national football team, he wasn't considered anymore. If he was ever, of course, it would be questioned truly a German. I was born and educated in Germany, so why don't people accept that I am German? These are the words of Mesut Özil. In Turkey, it seems like they really love Ozil. But in Germany, that's not universally the case. Arsene Wenger once said, if you love football, you love Ozil. But listen, there are some people who don't like Ozil's game, and that's fine. It's a choice, it's preference. But there is a word for people who criticize Ozil for not being the right kind of German. And we can call those people racist. The German-ness, so to say, is questioned because they have like mismatches or they differ in certain aspects in the sense of Ozil, you could say that he has a bit of a different uh, physical appearance. I mean, he's not completely white and he doesn't uh, have blue eyes and blonde hair. Just to be really frankly, uh, it's really stereotypical what a German should, air quote, look like. But also he's uh, a practicing Muslim. By seeing him as the other within German society, and it's not just Özil. I mean, it's, again, Özil is, is, is like the the case that stands out because of his high profile. The cultural markets that are used to other people from a certain society have changed. Have become more diverse. Have become more focused on religion, personal aspects. It's really complex to 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 say why people think that way. Because on the other hand, you could say, yeah, Özil is born as a German citizen. Um, has been going to school in Germany, speaks the German language fluently. I mean, what is not German about him, so to say? I mean, Germany, uh, again, compared with other countries as France, the Netherlands and UK are multicultural societies. And I think it's that one dimensional vision of what a nation of a country should look like. That's, that's the thing we should get rid of. And hey, speaking of racism, we've covered some issues related to identity in the past. You can check out our Justin's case on the New Zidans. Anyway, that's my take this week, but I want to hear yours. Why are feelings about Ozil so strong, especially in Germany? Let us know in the comments.